We're getting down to the business end for this series. We are searching for the top 10 innovations for this year. We already know eight of them that have made it through to the final. Let's keep searching. Welcome to Australia by Design Innovations. I'm here at the CSIRO testing facility in Newcastle where many new and remarkable innovations are put to the test every day. And at the CSIRO headquarters, we've gathered an impressive group of design industry leaders tasked with the job of selecting the top 10 innovation from the series and ultimately crowning one project the number one innovation for the year. We're looking for great design, but then beyond that, we're looking at innovation and probably most importantly, what, what impact is it going to have on, on sustainability uh, and on, on society as a whole? Is it going to change our world for the better? First up, an innovation for truckies that's making their lives a safer and more comfortable place. Did you know that the average truck travels 400,000 kilometres a year? Isn't that a good enough reason? to make our trucks safer and more comfortable for our truckies. Almost everything we interact with at some point was on the back of a truck. Getting it to you safely and efficiently is what this next innovation is all about. This place is massive. So it looks like you make most of the stuff in-house here. We do, and uh, even more fun than that is we actually get to design the products here. Australian trucks have to deal with some different conditions to trucks from around the world, be that because of the hot climate or because of the tyranny of distance or the specific laws and regulations. It means it gives us an opportunity to design products. In fact, we've had a great opportunity to release a new model, the T410. Well, forgive me, I didn't even realise that they had sleepers in, in the trucks. So Where did you think they just, went? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I thought, you know, hotels, motels, I don't yeah. know. Well, that, that, yeah. that too, you know, our drivers can be away for a night, they can be away for two weeks and they'll live in the truck. It's a huge amount of safety involved, isn't it? It's safety for the occupant, of course, just like in your car, but it's a much bigger deal for the uh, safety of other road users. But not only that, fuel economy and the environment is really important. So we study uh, aerodynamics and the effect of how it interacts with the trailer and so on. If you reduce fuel, you're, you're benefiting the environment too and you'll notice that you no longer see black smoke coming out of trucks anymore. So that's a, a huge victory for the environment. Ross, by the sounds of things as a designer, you've got a tricky job because you're not just designing sort of a vehicle, you're designing a house on wheels in a way. Uh, just like at home, you want a proper mattress to sleep on, you want a, a warm environment, you want to be able to block out the light, all those things. And so we create sleeper cabs that achieve that. Before today, I didn't even know that sleeper trucks even existed. With everything that I need, I've got storage, I've got a snack bar underneath me, I've got a comfy bed, and if I want to have a party, I've got speakers here. What more could you want? What's it really like, you know, being a truck driver in Australia? With our distances and our climate, it's not an easy life, and it's not for everybody, but it doesn't mean we have to live like animals, right? You've got to be kidding. A cheese platter on a truck is a good day. A truck might just seem like a way to get things from A to B, but they present a much bigger design challenge than that. These titans of the road, they have to be more than just efficient. They have to become safe, comfortable and warm places that are like homes away from home. And actually, I think this one might be mine for tonight. Next, simplicity yet effectiveness. That's the signs of good design. The word cushion and innovation in the same sentence is not something you necessarily expect. This next story will change that. Many great designs come from having an intimate knowledge and personal experience. But in this instance, the solution came from having an entirely outside perspective. Kate, you don't have kids, do you? So what made you come up with a baby feeding mat? Well, a lot of my girlfriends have kids um, and I think from an outsider's perspective I could just see how much they were struggling with breastfeeding, bottle feeding, privacy, kind of needing five hands all at once <laughs> to do the job with a newborn baby. So you saw them struggling when you're out and about and you came home and whipped one up on your dining yep. table? <laughs> 
and I've been able to give them to my friends and test it with them and get their feedback and then perfect it. This is the Bubba cover. Bubba cover, yeah. It's just great, you know, when you're out and about and quite nice and cosy. A lot of cafes, you know, you're outside, and sometimes there's a breeze, and so it kind of just blocks that. And if she falls asleep, it's a cosy little place for her to stay. And you still do want to keep a bit of that privacy and don't want everything sort of hanging out. <laughs> <laughs> so the great thing is that your concept then can take their expertise to commercialise yeah. it, so this can actually then be a viable yes. product run yeah. for you. And how does it stay up? There's little cords here that we just pull on either side and then that oh, just creates the little cocoon, cocoon the cosy, <laughs> the cosy cocoon. I could feed with her and obviously it's structured, so it sits up tall. If she's fussing around, my hands are free. You know, it's structured and it holds itself there. So the bubble cover actually has been something that has literally changed your life. Yeah, <laughs> it made me feel really confident being out with her feeding. So Carolina, the bubble cover is a great little play mat. Oh, it's fantastic. Knowing I can take something with me that's nice and clean for him to sit on and then I can easily wipe it up after we're done. Kate's careful observation and her confidence to follow it through has created a product that can have a huge impact on the daily lives of parents and their babies. After the break, it's time to work out digital style. We've gathered a group of design industry leaders at the CSIRO to judge what are the best design innovations for the year. Now, our guest international entry is from the USA. It's time to work out. Guys and girls, have I got a personal trainer for you. This is a game changer. The coolest gym on the wall. I want one. You know your typical home gym. It's big, bulky, and you have to dedicate a whole room to it. Well, forget all of that. This next innovation has revolutionized the home gym system. Sounds too good to be true? Let's see. Is this it? This is it, right? Very small, very slim, hangs on the wall like a television. Hmm, okay. This replaces a whole gym. So here you'll actually notice this rotates out, the arms come up. So if you want to do a lat pull down, now pull down on that. I can't Completely reach different. it, though. Okay, we can have that adjustable <laughs> for you. <laughs> Here you go. I'm short. Oh, oh, this easy peasy. Put more on it. More, you I got can do it. it. Let's put some heavy weight on there. For you. Wait, this is how you change the weight? That's how you change the weight. Just digitally? Digitally. This Ooh. is the magic of the machine. Okay, here it comes, here it comes. Whoa, okay. See, because it's oh. digital, it can actually slowly bring you into the weight. Totally, that is amazing. Instead of weights, uh -huh. there's actually an electric motor in here that's providing all of the resistance. Wow. Yeah, I love the compact size of the design. Exactly. I'm, being in San Francisco has been a great chance for us to see just how small apartments are. You think about treadmills and stuff, man, those things are as, as big as a car sometimes. So what we're really trying to do is just have that trainer experience, that guided experience that tells you what to do and how to do it right and effectively in your own home. Hey, what's up? I'm Coach Kelly, and today I'll be guiding you through the tonal strength baseline. Who's that good looking guy? That's me. <laughs> now, since I'm in person, I'll tell you exactly what's happening. Tonal's gonna get to know you, assess your strength, recommend base weights for you, and then we'll get you right into a workout. And when you're ready to start working, click the weight on using the button on our smart handle. Whoa. You feel the weight kick on? Yeah, I definitely feel it. There's very few products that achieve all three design disciplines, aesthetics, engineering, and UX, user experience. But Tonal exceeds in all three, blending them together seamlessly. Another thing I've learned is that I've got some work to do. <sighs> the mining industry is a tough game, and this next innovation is up for the challenge. Anybody who's ever been to the Pilbara and seen all the mining trucks and equipment will know how large they are, how strong they have to be. And this sign is no exception. It may look like a simple thing, but let me tell you, there's some serious technology in this. The Pilbara, a vast and rugged landscape where one simple idea is making a huge difference to the safety of the men and women who slug it out in this environment every day. Guys, we're finished. Come and get me, please. 
Damien, this is the biggest truck I've ever seen. Mate, uh, can you imagine being in a mining environment, driving around between these things? That sounds very scary. Would you like to go and have a look? I sure would. Can I drive? Uh, no. A monster! Damien, that was intense. And you see why vehicle identification is so important. So that's why we've developed the Rockboard vehicle identification signs. You can imagine that it's quite challenging during the day, it's somewhat more challenging at night. Here's the Rockboard. This is uh, reflective numbers. It is reflective numbers, Rob, but it's also oh, LED illuminated. Nice. So how tough is it really? Mate, these are built to handle anything that you can throw at them on a mine site. Wow. Water cannon washing, impact resistance, and vibration resistance. So how do you change the number on this? Well, with this one you can't, but the evolution of the product is a Rockboard modular, uh -huh. and you simply remove the front, pull oh, out right. each segment, okay. and manipulate the display. So it's like the old calculator number. Absolutely. The difference between this and digital, with the digital display when the vehicle's powered down, you lose your display. Right. This goes back to its reflective component. Yep. There's a harness in the box that allows you to link one sign with another one. Nice. What we're really focused on is providing the end user with positive identification of their mining equipment right. at first glance. That allows the end user to quickly and concisely communicate via two-way radio in the dark, creating a safer work environment. Hey, that number's super bright. You can really see the contrast between the reflective ID and the LED. This isn't like driving your car through your local shopping centre car park. The rock board plays a key role in mine site safety with a simple flick of a switch. And now an innovation that's all about a new way of thinking. Community consultation has conventionally been about answering questions, filling in surveys and giving information to other people. But times have changed and now we have the opportunity to co-design the places that we're going to be living in. Some problems are so big, it's difficult to know where they start and, frankly, where they end, and how people like us can jump in and make a difference. Our next innovation, however, just might have the answers for that. Nina, what big problems are you facing? Well, Paul, tell me, what sort of big problems are we facing in society? Uh, climate change, mm -hmm. ageing population. They're pretty big problems, and we are tackling those every day around the world. And at Think Place, we call them gridlock problems. It's stuck, and you're frustrated. You're like, but something has to change. I've got to go forward. So we think about this in two ways. What are people experiencing every day? We zoom in on that experience, and then we zoom out, and we ask everyone to say, how do we work together to solve this? And we prototype and test, and we learn to see what works. So Nina, this is now getting weird. What are we doing sitting on the floor of a library? We are playing a car game about the future of Willoughby City. And it all came about because Deborah asked us to help her find a creative way to engage the citizens that live here. And each of these represents a major theme of aspiration for the city. Yeah, have a read of what's on the cards and I want you to like deal the favourite card that you've got that says, this is what I want to see in the future. And what's this called, what we're doing now? This is a form of gamification. It's actually where you take the everyday, a conversation about what matters to you, and we can make it a bit fun. And did this work, Deborah? Absolutely. The people really enjoyed it. It was fast, high energy, creative, saved them reading hundreds of pages of documents. It worked. So you don't just solve problems in Australia? No, not at all. Overseas as well. And in fact, I'd like you to meet someone. Huh? This is Elliot. OK. Elliot, hi. Where are you? Hi, I'm here in our Africa studio. We're working in Mozambique with a community with one of the highest rates of HIV, very high rates of unwanted pregnancy. How are you driving positive change out there in those markets? We've created a new bespoke counselling tool. And through this, we're starting to see more girls attending the services but spending less time in clinics because they're able to get what they need quicker. Mm. Nina's description of gridlock is fascinating. And what Think Place are doing here is using a design approach to drive real positive change. After the break, the simple doorknob reinvented. Welcome back to Australia by Design Innovations. We are all about finding our top innovations for the year. And our judges are counting down and creating their shortlist. There are just two spots left in our top 10. But first, a reimagining 
of the simple doorknob. This door handle is totally new and radical, which is my favorite kind of design. You pull instead of twist, which is much easier to use, especially for those with disabilities. Now there's a lot of things we take for granted in our life, just like the common door handle. G'day. How are you, Twine? Good, thank you. Jamie, good to see you. I am here to find out about your incredible doorknob. Yeah. Why reinvent the door handle? Well, it's, it's good for most people, but for yeah. people with physical impairments, it's very difficult. My mum has rheumatoid arthritis. Ten years ago, uh, when I was renovating my mum's property, there were no ergonomic handles for people with uh, a disability. And here it is. Wow, it's a pretty neat item. I've not seen anything like it. So it's just a matter of retrofitting these into your existing doors. So this just fits into any doorknob hole if you took the other doorknob away. That's right. Right? In fact, anyone can install it. Even me? Yeah. Shall we do it? Let's, let's, do, let's it. do it. Come on. Okay, Jamie, here you go. Alrighty. This should be pretty simple. I don't think I've ever thought of having a doorknob that just simply doesn't need to twist. Yeah. So this was really born out of necessity because of your mother's ailments. I sketched uh, a little design in my notepad, left it there for about 10 years, <laughs> went off and became a lawyer, but right. then decided to embark on another career path and study engineering. Yeah, right. During my engineering course, I uh, learned how to 3D model and I decided to resurrect this idea I had 10 years ago and designed this mechanism where the handle could be simplified to allow the user to push or pull the handle instead of twisting. I must say, this is pretty simple. This is as simple as installing a standard handle. Yeah. yeah. It works. Yes, it does. This is really cool. And is mum happy now? She is very happy. It makes her life easier, much easier. Yeah, fantastic. Nice job. Thank you very much. Very yeah. nice little idea. Yeah. And well executed. Mm. For a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Next, an innovation that's kind of about insurance, but more about design. Life insurance. If you're like me, you probably find it completely confusing. Integrity Life innovates the way that we can access the information that we need to make informed decisions. I don't know how many times I've heard designers being described as people who put lipstick on a pig. We're the guys who make everything look pretty. Well, truly great design is about designing that pig from the ground up, lipstick and all. And that's exactly what these guys have done in the insurance game. We've re-envisaged life insurance systems into something which is really simple and easy to use and has features in it that are common to places like Amazon, like a shopping cart. We got some IT people in from Silicon Valley and other places that were able to build us life insurance systems that are really geeky. So you got geeks and you got great designers and you got people who understood the user and yeah, come up with a, with a game changing project. That's the only way to go for us. So Fraser, this is where all the action takes place. Yeah, that's right. We've got a team of around 30 designers, all taking the really good user-centric work that we're doing and turning it into excellent solutions. We've actually had to really push the boat out and really do something that's very unusual for this industry, and that's 100% in the cloud. So we were actually born in the cloud. So working in the cloud allows us to get to market really quickly. We're constantly innovating. In fact, we've got a new innovation I'd love to use you as a guinea pig right now. Bring it on, let's see. So here it is, Brenton. So our customer testing has told us that a really important feature is the ability for a customer to complete their personal information online in the comfort of their own home. Having a look at this, I mean, there's some very personal questions here about my lifestyle, about my health. So that makes perfect sense. Yeah. I'm not really going to feel comfortable in sharing that information with a complete stranger. I'd much rather take it home and do it in, in my own time, in my own house. That's right, absolutely. Product design is all about the things that we can touch and feel that this innovation is a fantastic example of service design. Although you can't touch it, it's still a very important piece of design that has the potential to have a profound impact on our lives. Next, Terry's test driving another new workout innovation. 
Who doesn't need to improve their health and fitness? The Twin Ball Trainer is a safe platform that helps you step up your exercise regime. No excuses now. I've been asked to turn up here in my gym gear today, so I'm already a little worried about this one. What are we doing here today, Laurie? Well, Terry, the exercise equipment industry is a billion dollar industry, and a large portion of that market comes from instability products like Fitballs, but a lot of them are very dangerous for the average person. So I'm just gonna get you to demonstrate a squat for us. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. You can see how your feet are turning out to the sides. Yes. Can you feel that? Yeah, I can. Yeah, which is actually pretty risky for your ankles and your knees and your hips. So another way that people often use these is with the flat side up, which is even more dangerous because as you can see, it's very wobbly. So you can see how tricky yeah. that was even with my help. So another way that people often use these is they try and lay on them to do some sort of core or abdominal work. So the only problem with that is that it really arches your back and excessively curves your spine. It means my neck is working really hard and straining, which makes it pretty risky for most people. So what I've done is I've created a new product. This is a twin ball trainer. It's two inflatable balls separated by two platforms. As you can see, it's still quite wobbly, but your feet are actually nice and flat, so your ankles aren't being put under strain. Right. Still getting some good instability, making those muscles switch on, activating your core, but you're doing it much safer and you didn't need my help to get on. Because we can change the inflation of the balls, we can make it really unstable, or just a little bit unstable, so people can really customise it to suit themselves. This is also really beneficial for doing exercises where you have to lay down. So instantly your spine is in a much better space, you're not being excessively curved, your head's supported, your neck's not tensing, which makes it much safer for doing any sort of abdominal work or core work or even upper body exercises. Well, that was actually all much easier than I thought. Thanks for your time, Laurie. We're not done with you yet, Terry. I think it's time you jumped into a class. The genius thing about Laurie's design is that I can come in here and use this for the first time and feel safe and confident and really feel the difference. In this series, we've introduced the Friedman Accelerator Award. Peter Friedman will handpick a startup innovator from the series for mentoring and to introduce them to Rode Microphones business networks on the Australian and international stage. The winner will be announced later in the series. This Accelerator Award is my way of giving back a little bit. And through this series, I can't wait to see who we're going to pick. Still to come, Ali's in Tasmania talking water management. We're on the home stretch for this episode of Australia by Design Innovations. Which projects will our design industry judges select to go through to the final. Now, wastewater management from Tasmania. Streamwise is using artificial intelligence to treat industrial water waste. It's saving money for our food producers and it's cleaning up our waterways. I'm impressed. Stop for a second and imagine that I am a cheese maker. It's what I do, it's what I live for, it's what I love. But, unfortunately, it also means that I have to be a wastewater treatment manager which isn't so great. This is a bit smelly here, isn't it? It is, Ali. We're at a dairy plant today, and there's a lot of wastewater that comes from the processing of the, the different products that they're making here. And they've got to um, treat the wastewater before putting it out to sewer. So what's the problem with putting this sort of water in the sewage system? It might be acidic or caustic and you can't have that going into the sewer. Otherwise it could degrade the sewer lines or otherwise uh, cause blockages and things like that. We pick up what the, the constituents of the water are, pH and solid levels and everything like that. And then we um, control the chemical dosing pumps to remove all the organics out of the water and also direct the pH before it goes out to the sewer lines. It's called a DAF, a dissolved air flotation system, and with the chemical changes that happens in the water, it just lifts all those solids up to the top, so you end up with the fats and oils and proteins, things like that on the top, and then the clean water cascades over the back end of the plant. Traditionally, you'd have people manning this operation just to check what's happening with the water chemistry. And uh, since we've installed this uh, streamwise system, it's checking the, the operation of the chemistry all the time, so it operates 24-7. So on one of the sites uh, where we're using the system, the quality of the water off the back end of the DAF is really consistent and good quality. So we're able to reuse that water on site for washing down cattle yards. So it saves money for the customer too. 
I actually have three service operators that work a four on four off to maintain this plant. Um, they all have their own little quirks about how they run the plant and it's quite manually intensive. Having this system online now is estimated to be a couple hundred thousand dollars worth of savings due to council charges and also chemical usage. We now have that chemicals being maintained to the levels that are required rather than the guesswork my service operators used to do in trying to manage the DAF plant. While Streamwise is also great for cost saving and efficiency, what I really love about it is that by combining smart technology with our natural resources, you only have to take what you need. And when we're talking millions of litres of water a day, it makes a huge difference. Large scale integrated life and work developments are on the rise. International towers are really innovating the way that we bring people and places together. 30,000 people interact with these towers every day. That's the population of Dubbo. The question is, how do you use clever design to make sure those people feel like they are part of an inclusive community? Hey Liam, the first thing I notice is you use your phone to buzz into the building. Yes, Brandon, it's because I hate those dog tags. You're trying to put the phone down and the coffee and looking for the tag. So we designed a solution that would put all that into the phone. Liam, your 30 second elevator pitch. What was your magic design formula that you used to create this beautiful community? Well, Brandon, there were three components to it. Firstly, the people. We were very selective as to who we engaged with. Secondly, technology. We wanted to make sure you had seamless experience with technology and it was robust. And thirdly, great design in the space so that people had a wonderful Level experience, an inspiring experience. You did it. As you can see, we've created a workspace that is a ratio of one person per seven square metres. So what we've done is we've kept the perimeter of the building open. When I first suggested that, my team laughed at me at putting glass walls in buildings. But now that we have it, what you see is you see a relationship between neighbours through shared light and shared views, and it builds a stronger community and therefore a stronger outcome for people. The kitchen, the, uh, the centre of everything, like all great households, all great communities. Now somebody told me that all these plans come out and you do something kind of cool on a Friday <laughs> afternoon. Well, cool, yeah, probably Australia's dearest esky. The plants come out and they go on a shelf and we fill it with ice and the drinks go in and we have a bit of an old school round the kitchen table get together. This looks like a work of art. I mean, is this just a beautiful old painting? We license the art in and we replicate the art. And what it actually does, it's covering our, uh, our locker bank. And you use your phone to open it up, of and course you do. And the digital supports community again. Liam, creating a space like this where you have, you're chopping out big chunks of concrete, it must have cost a fortune. Well, Brandon, you're thinking about it the wrong way, actually. So for me, it was investing over the horizon by creating an amazing space that has provenance that will be here for a very long time. And if you look at it, in fact, it's created floor space, whereas a staircase would never do that for you. I've seen a lot of workspaces in my time. Some are beautiful, but not functional. Some are functional, but they look terrible. It's a big call to make, but I reckon this must be one of the best places to work in the world. And now time to find out from our judges which innovations from this episode will go through to the best of the best top 10 final in just two episodes time. Everybody wants to be fit and if you're vain like I am, you want to look good. The Tonal Gym is something special. I, I gotta have one. Designed by people who know workouts, but also aesthetically pleasing. It's got a television, it's got audio, it's got everything in it. I mean, this is incredible. Well, another tough ruling from our judges. Only one innovation was chosen from this episode. Congratulations to Tonal Digital Strength Training Systems. You have made it through to the final. Stay with us for more Australia by Design innovations. For more information on any of today's innovations, go to australiabydesign.com.au.